Welcome to Spotlight Santa Monica. I'm Sandy Jacobson. A lot of work goes into making our city such a desirable place to live. Today you will meet the people who keep Santa Monica safe, well-read, and inspire creativity. Not only does Santa Monica have top-notch fire and police departments, we are also fortunate enough to have the Office of Emergency Management that is ready to jump to action when disaster strikes. Joining me now is Paul Weinberg, Emergency Services Coordinator. Paul, thank you so much for joining us on Spotlight Santa Monica. Thank you for having me. So what does the Office of Emergency Management do? Well, the Office of Emergency Management was created to keep the city that we love, Santa Monica, uh, safe and prepared for an emergency. Um, not only for those who work here, but those who live and play and visit here as well. This is a, a destination city and we have a responsibility to keep everyone here safe and prepared and ready to be um, responders in an emergency and recover afterwards. And emergency are earthquakes, earthquakes, fires, floods, fires, floods, everything you think that uh, California has to offer us <laughs> <laughs> in addition to our sunshine. But mainly yeah. our main goal is, um, is earthquake preparedness. That's our number one threat. Okay, and we've had a couple of little shakers. We have. So what could I do, what can we all do to prepare right now for the next big, er big earthquake? Okay, I, I, that's a good point, the, the big earthquake. Uh, many of us remember the Northridge earthquake from um, 1994. That was a moderate earthquake. It was that very. That was moderate? It was, it was destructive and it caused lots of property loss in Santa Monica. But what we're preparing for is the real catastrophic event, one that really shuts down our region for a number of days or weeks, if not months. And we want to be able to respond and recover as best we can. And San, um, Santa Monica of Office of Emergency Management has simplified our message, three basic steps. Have a kit, have a plan, and be informed. And I, I can tell you about all those three steps. And if each of us do that, um, we're going to be in a really good place. Well, like what's in the kit? Well, first of all, the kit, uh, most important item you should put in there is water. Um, as human beings, we need water. Mm -hmm. And as human beings who may have pets and family members, we all need water. So as we put this kit together, make sure that we have enough water, a gallon per day per person in a household, um, to last five to seven days. Mm. So um, that's really kind of a lot. You're talking about a family of four, for example. It is, and one of the things we've done is changed our model of preparedness. Um, instead of putting all seven days of food and water and supplies in the garage or in the basement mm -hmm. or somewhere, we mix it up. Put three or four days in your car. So if something happens, not an earthquake, but if you get stuck in a traffic jam, you've got a gallon of water, or a box of granola bars, something to eat. Um, put another gallon or two at work, and then three or four gallons at home. You'll have your seven days wherever you are, right. and, and you'll need that. But not first thing you can do, um, water, food and water, as well as any special medications. Uh, many of us, you know, well have, that's a very good point. Have, have things that if we pretend that the pharmacies are closed and the banks are closed, and you can't what get money. That's right. What do we need um, to kind of function until the systems come back online? So that's what goes in your preparedness kit. The second step is a plan, um, very important, a family emergency plan. And it doesn't have to be a giant binder, a 20 page <laughs> you know, document that right. you're memorizing. The best thing to do is go home tonight, talk to your family. If the earthquake were to happen today, how are we going to get back together? Um, I work in, in Santa Monica. My wife works in Glendale. We live in Los Angeles. So every day we're spread out throughout LA County. Mm -hmm. And at least we have a plan. Who's going to get the kids? Where are we going to meet? If we can't get to our location, do we have an alternate location? Um, that's really the emergency plan. The, the second part about that is contact information. Have your key phone numbers um, written down on a piece of paper. We all use cell phones. We program yeah, in all the information. Mm -hmm. None of us remember the numbers that we, you know, probably no. to our own home anymore. It's true. Um, if if you're like that and you don't remember all of our numbers, write them down because you may need to. You may be without your cell phone. Your cell phone may not have power. And I can't think of something more frightening than not being able to reach those I loved because I can't remember their phone number. So yeah. that's part of your plan is just having a number and also texting in a disaster, um, not while driving, but text. Text an emergency. Don't call. Um, using the regular telephone because we're going to jam up the lines, and and so mm -hmm. that's that's basically. And what texting into. won't doesn't do that. I mean it doesn't. It's a quick data send, and you're more likely to get information mm -hmm. out and receive it. So that's what goes into your family plan. 
there were three. Three is be informed. Um, the city has spent a lot of time and energy building out what's called SM Alert. It's our emergency notification and alert system. Um, we have the ability in an emergency to reach every household in Santa Monica with either a phone call, a text message, an email, um, and that's for an emergency that we'll give the uh, people who live, work, and play here the best information of how to take care of themselves. Um, that program is called SM Alerts, and it's- So again, it's-, it's Have a kit, kit, have a plan, plan, and be informed. Okay. Well, the, the h actual title of your organization is CERT, because it has to do with the community. Yes. So how can a person become involved, better involved, in the community itself to be, to help in this example, sure. terrible sure. Well, hypothesis. One of the programs that OEM, Office of Emergency Management, started um, in Santa Monica is the CERT program, Community Emergency Response Team. This has been a fantastic development for the city. We've trained over 150 residents in emergency response. It's a free three-day training program um, offered through the Office of Emergency Management and our police and fire departments, and we teach people great skills like how to put out a fire. Everybody who takes a class uses a fire extinguisher, gets to extinguish a fire, how to do some that's basic... Kind of fun. Yeah, it is. Well, that's <laughs> the one that gets them. We, we, we do that the first day. Do you have to wear bathing suits to do that? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. We actually have people in nice fire jackets uh -oh. and helmets and goggles and gloves. Um, but everyone gets to do that. We teach some basic disaster first aid. Um, you know, in, in a disaster, the hospitals are going to be overwhelmed. And those with minor cuts and bumps and bruises, we're going to be the first responders, the neighbors. 99% of first responders in big emergencies are, are our neighbors, mm -hmm. the people who live next door to us. Uh, we'll go outside, we'll help rescue somebody. It may just be clearing a doorway or clearing debris off of the steps and helping somebody out of their home. Um, we teach all of this in our CERT program. We teach how to lift and carry people safely. We teach the psychology of, of what a disaster can do to us as responders. We teach how to dig somebody out of rubble if they may be there. But it's the, the reason we do it is this CERT team is a, a force multiplier. There are not a lot of fire and police people in town every day. It no. may seem like it, we all get traffic tickets. That being <laughs> said, um, we only have 30 firefighters in town a day. Um, there's 90,000 people who live here on a busy summer afternoon. We've got hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of people here. And the first responders are gonna be you and I, the people who are here able to reach uh, our community members. As soon as I stop screaming, right? That's right. Well, <laughs> that's why we do teach disaster <laughs> right. psychology, understanding what our limits are, how to help people. It may just be, um, you know, our CERT program is designed for the entire community. It's not just people who want to be firemen and want to get out and dig through rubble. Um, everybody's got a, a, a use in it. And it may just be offering some some kind words to somebody who's, who's seen an, a you know, an, an unpleasant sight, but it's it's really about how do we help this community respond and recover to an emergency. Well, at the end, we're going to talk about your website, but is that how people could find out about getting that training? It is. It is. Okay. We have an online form, and um, our classes have been filled every every class we've had since we started the program 18 months ago. And one of the most rewarding parts about the program is, while the, yes, it's a three-day class and it's about a six-hour day we have not lost a student yet. And what I mean is <laughs> we have 40 who show up day one, all 40 all come 40 back for finish. day two and day three. And that is really rewarding for us because that means not only is it important that we're doing it, but people really are getting a lot out of it. Right, for themselves and their family and, and their, their families and, their and they're all referring friends. Right. And the best part about this program is it's ongoing. So mm -hmm. while we bring them in and teach them these skills, we use them throughout the year. We use them in our disaster exercises, our drills, the LA Marathon every year for the last two years, we've used a CERT team to help the runners as they, as they finish this incredible race. So it's, it's a benefit it's a for the city. Program. Thank you so much, Paul, for telling us about that program and telling us how to be prepared, God forbid. Yes, you're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. For more information about those CERT classes we're talking about, please visit smgov.net slash OEM. Up next, have you had a chance to check out the new PICO library yet? All the details coming up. Riding a bicycle can seem like child's play. But only if you're playing indoors. <laughs> Cars and bikes need to play together. Play it safe. Ride by the rules. Hey, share the road.
Discover 30 years of opera in Santa Monica. Discover the Verdi Chorus. It is the fifth branch of the Santa Monica Public Library, and joining me now is Cecilia Tovar of the new Pico Library. Cecilia, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And congratulations on your beautiful new library. Oh, thank you. Tell us about it and about the, your collection. Oh, well, the Pico Library has over 25,000 popular titles, and we have children books, teen books, um, adult books, and also the large print. In addition to that, we have all our e-content, e-books, audiobooks. It's beautiful. <laughs> so now on the e-book, I, I would like to, th I, I wonder about libraries now that so much of, pr of the printed word is not printed anymore, it's Correct. digital. Mm -hmm. How do libraries deal with that or how have you advanced as, as because of that? Well, we definitely are, um, you know, continue uh, going and taking classes and also conferences. We talk about a lot about the digital trend in libraries. We provide classes for the adults. We call it petting zoos. They mm -hmm. come, they bring their devices, and we show them how to use them, and how to download a book, how to um, read and I mean uh, listen to an audiobook. We answer all kinds of questions um, about devices and technology. We also offer wi um, free Wi-Fi in the city. Mm -hmm. um, we encourage people to go online and you know make their reservation for books and also to pay their fines. We just want people to, to integrate the technology in their lives. And we want them to see the library is a resource. Do you read online or do you read books? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I do read the news online. I do uh, keep up with the social media. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just one of the big things that libraries also are doing to market their programs. I go onto Facebook, Twitter, and we're constantly announcing our progress. But I also enjoy reading books. Holding a book in your hand. Yes, definitely. And I, I'm sorry. No, no, please, please. <laughs> I have a four-year-old, so oh. for me, it's very important to show, uh, you know, right. a model reading for her. Uh, exactly, and I, th I think that reading from a book uh, to a four-year-old is more is better because they can see the picture better, and, and they can touch it. Uh, tell us about <laughs> the layout of this new library. Well, the library, the Pico Library, has a children's section and also has the adult and teen. I uh, we have encountered that is your when you sit down there you can see outside and mm. experience the Virginia Avenue Park activities. Um, we also have computers for adults, we have for children, and when you walk into the library, the natural light is so nice, mm -hmm. and it's just such a uh, nice environment to enjoy reading there. You have youth programs there too. Correct. What kind yes. of, what's that all about? Youth programs, we have our core programming that we call, it's the um, book discussions, uh, story time, toddler time, we have authors, we have performances, but we also have home or health for students, and we try to really encourage literacy, not just with books, it's also, you know, um, incorporate the arts, mm -hmm. the visual literacy. So when you say youth, you mean like from toddlers to, to, teens? to teens, and also we uh, try to encourage many of the college students to come, mm -hmm. and the adults, definitely. You have an outreach program as well? Correct. How does that work? Well, we do have a Latino outreach program, but in general, all the librarians at the branches, we do uh, go outside of the library to promote the library services. We also get invited to many events. We also go to the schools, because we're trying to um, collaborate mm -hmm. with everyone. Um, so every time we invite it to an event, we bring the information, we, we encourage people to always to register for a library card. And definitely, you know, community organizations are a plus in, in Santa Monica, so we always try to be part of it. So you mentioned that you have Latino programs. I'm assuming you have books in Spanish? Yes, that's one uh, a plus in the Pico branch. We do have a collection in Spanish. Uh, we try to um, select many popular titles, uh, also a lot of self-help, and we're going to have a book um, uh, talk in Spanish. Many of the programs are also going to be in Spanish because we do have a bilingual staff. Mm -hmm. So that will help us to, you know, provide 
services to that community. Well, you have something kind of fancy coming up, literacy festivals. Tell us about that. Yes, um, working with the Virginia Avenue Park, uh, we have been planning around what we're going to do with the these literacy events. And um, we're thinking of having seasonal events, and those are going to be all geared to literacy, mm -hmm. making it multicultural and is inviting storytellers, performers, and also have story time alive for children. So we really want to focus in literacy. So to be a librarian, it's an interesting job to me because you must have started <laughs> l reading when you were very little <laughs> and loved it. Talk about your background a little bit. Um, well, I grew up in, um, in Arizona, San Luis on the border town, and yes, you know, libraries in Arizona were, you know, very nice, and coming to the school and everything, but I really got interested in libraries when I went to college in Tucson. I started working as a page, and then from there as a library assistant, a specialist, and I just thought, oh, what an interesting job, because you don't see what's really go behind a library. It's more than just shelving a book. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, just when I started seeing those students coming in and asking questions and you connecting it with resources, I thought, oh, this is a great <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have a master's in library science from the University of Arizona. Now, is there a lot of help with references? When, and in your, I know there is in the big library, but in the Pico branch as well? Definitely. Um, there's many questions with reference, also connecting information to resources and social services. Um, one, area that, one area that we do at the Pico Branch is um, walking around. We really want to be visible and with an iPad and asking questions or if people can come and approach us if they have a question. We can show them where they are or kind of show them online where can they find it. Mm -hmm. information. One of the things you were telling me is that you actually give classes on how to use your iPad or your <laughs> Mac or... We actually, the iPad is a way to you connect to the screen and so people can actually see on the screen, um, you know, and follow you in the computer. Um, they can also, you know, if they bring their own devices, and this is part of the petting zoos, they come and bring their own devices, you kind of walk them through and then you talk about the application, uh, uh, education application for the children. Also, you know, you can kind of do a little bit of story time with them using their iPad. Uh, and oh. kids are just fascinated with those oh, screens. Yes, we do have uh, three early literacy stations, which are um, games and geared to more educational, like science, reading, math, mm -hmm. but in, in a way that they can play games and learn. So not only they're getting information through print, the digital, the iPads, but also they can come to the library and use those early literacy stations. So a personal question, I've always wondered if I download a book from the library, can't I sort of <laughs> just keep it forever? No, you can't. Oh. <laughs> you know, but it, the nice part is that you don't have to worry about coming to the library and return to your return item. It. it just disappears. <laughs> So what if I want to renew it? What if I haven't finished it? You can, it? you can. You can just go online and you can renew it once. Mm -hmm. um, but if you don't do it in the time that you're supposed to, then it, the, the uh, book will disappear. Well, I'm awfully <laughs> glad that the Pico branch is not going to disappear. It'll be there for a long, <laughs> no, long no. time. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Thank you. For more, please visit smpl.org. Up next, time to get artsy and crafty you'll find out what happens in that camera obscura building at 1450 Ocean Avenue. Stay tuned. Good morning, sunshine. If he were, he'd tell you, right? You're too healthy to be. He didn't look sick. What if you weren't safe every time? What if he's sleeping with his ex? What if it broke? If you are HIV positive, what happens next? You don't have to live with Mr. Doubt. Common Ground offers free testing and care for HIV and STDs, including hepatitis. Just stop by or call us. It's time you know. Hey, slow down. Right next to the library on 7th Street is the Santa Monica History Museum, where history comes to life <laughs> for the entire family. Enjoy the exhibits, main gallery, the photo archive, research gallery, and much more. Come visit the Santa Monica History Museum, keeping history alive. 
from making amazing photorealistic quilts to making your own jewelry, hat, or sewing project, 1450 Ocean Avenue is the place to let your creativity run wild. Joining me now is Cultural Affairs Supervisor Naomi Okuyama. Naomi, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited to meet you and see what you guys have been doing. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I've been to 1450. They were doing this when I was there. <laughs> Tell me what it is. Well, over the past year, we've been slowly building an art lab for adults. So we do crafts of all kinds. We do movement workshops. And we do Wait, fine is arts. that like dancing? Dancing. We have salsa. We uh, did some tango earlier. We have Zumba classes. Uh -huh. There's okay. It's great. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> I wanted to be sure what movement was. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, anything cultural in mm -hmm. that way. And, uh, and in addition, we do drawing, painting, fine arts, but also crafts, and the intersection between the two. So talk about crafts. I see hats, knitting, which is what I do. That's, <laughs> of all of this, it's the only thing I can do. These amazing bowls are um, made of felt uh, from felt. scratch? Felt, for, uh, felt wool, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. How do you do that? It's, a, it's an amazing process, but it's also, I want to back up and say that all of these things anybody can do. Yeah, you right. Don't, <laughs> you don't have to have any prior knowledge of any, any of these things, because all of our classes right now, at least, are really geared to somebody who's casually interested, who says, maybe I want to try and make a hat for Easter parade or whatever <laughs> it is, and, and go for it and do it. And so is somebody who's obviously expert in teaching you how to make hats, that's the person who's uh, instructing you how to do that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what about supplies? Uh, mostly they, they provide the supplies and then um, class, uh, people who take the class can pay for them. Mm -hmm. So we have some supplies are quite, um, quite easy to get a hold of. Wool felt um, is, is not too expensive. Hat blanks are a little more expensive. Um, when we come to the jewelry, some of this is copper, some of this is silver, so there's a little variation. So it's there, you just decide how much, you, if, you, if you want to spend the amount of money yeah. that it takes. Yeah. So, all right. Is, you called this a hat? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a fascinator. Uh -huh. So yeah, it does have a little, it sits on the head here. And uh, you know, you oh, can yeah. kind of perch so it on the head. We got to see that at the royal wedding. Oh, uh, right, right. right. <laughs> and right. show us this beautiful thing. Well, this is actually an antique, but I did bring oh. it as a, um, as a sort of example of, this is um, bead weaving. So they have uh, little looms that you can um, put the beads on. And um, yeah, th this was very popular around the turn of the century. It's um, just and beautiful. Is that how old this is? This one is from the 20s, yeah. yeah. And can a person who comes to the class do f work that fine? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It takes a while, uh -huh. but yes. How long are the classes usually? Well, most of our classes are two to four hours. Uh -huh. Some of them, like the hat making, is three hours each day for two days. Uh -huh. um, like the felt hats, you have to actually let them dry. Um, so you get them all wet, you shape them, you do you put the little uh, curves into them, mm -hmm. and then they dry, and then you finish them the next day. And that would be the same with something like this? This, actually, people can take home. They'll still be wet, but it only takes two, three hours to do. It's so cool looking. <laughs> Isn't it great? So, and then this. Talk oh, about yeah. that. This was just last Saturday, actually. We had a woman uh, named Bijo Trimble come and teach us how to do indigo dyeing. Um, from scratch, so using indigo crystals. So indigo is a natural dye, right? Um, and uh, she does a lot of workshops with all sorts of natural colors. Is this um, where they tie it with rubber bands? And then we did some tie dye with it. Yeah, yeah. So we used rubber bands and rocks and marbles and tied them up, and uh, and then it came out like this. Pretty fun. So the the classes are usually a couple of days. They're not weeks of. You know, you get started right. and then you work for weeks. Or? Usually it's just a one time. So this, this class was only uh, three hours. Uh -huh. um, and then you came away with something finished. Wow. So you pay for the supplies. Do you pay for the classes too? Yeah, we pay. Uh, yeah, we, have, uh, we pay our instructors. So we so have a little like class what? fees. Some of the uh, classes are five, ten, fifteen dollars. Uh -huh. Some are forty, fifty, sixty. Our most expensive class coming up is one hundred and twenty. That's make your own personalized perfume that you get uh -huh. to take away with you. How cool! <laughs> so it depends also on how much the materials cost. So I see you have a repair cafe and trade school. Yes. Okay. Yes. What's that? So this is our uh, collaboration with Santa Monica's Resource Recovery uh, Program. We're doing a, a repair cafe where folks can bring their broken items in and get expert advice on how to fix them and keep things out of the landfill. So we love oh. this sort of tinkering activity. Yeah. And, 
Because you, you I just was asking how to get a broken printer fixed, and everybody said buy a new one. Right, right. We and are in a disposable that. society. I, I know, yeah, I know. yeah. So could d people don't bring printers there, do they? Well, this is our first time, and if somebody did bring a printer, and we might have to scratch our heads a bit because <laughs> we are also drawing upon the community to bring our experts in. So uh -huh. if you know how to fix something, we want to see you. <laughs> how, so where, how do you get your experts? Um, I go to craft shows. I go to uh, flea markets. Um, we, I take classes. I uh -huh. find great instructors. Um, people come and propose projects to us. So all sorts of different ways. So how did you get involved in doing this? Were you also always an artsy craftsy kind of girl? I've always been a crafter of some sort. Mm -hmm. Not a very serious one because I like to do too many different things and I have a little hard time finishing things, but mm -hmm. uh, which is nice when you have a one session class because you are done at the end. <laughs> so you mean most of these things were made in one or maybe two classes? Yes, that's right. That's really exciting. Yeah. So what's the, what, what's the range of people who come into the classes? Oh my gosh, we have served in our classes 18 to 85 year olds nice. in the same class. Even. That's really nice. <laughs> Which is really fun. That's so, so people yeah. sitting in sort of like a knitting circle? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk about this because I'm a knitter and oh, I recognize yeah. this is not easy. This, this, <laughs> the stitch isn't hard, no. but the, that's a tiny needle. It is, it is. It takes a while. Um, this is a first of two socks. Mm -hmm. So there's the second sock syndrome where you yes, know, right. <laughs> right. get a little bored, but hopefully uh, I will continue with this one. <laughs> so people can learn how to knit here mm -hmm. too? Yeah, and we have actually crochet class coming right up. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So how do people find out about the classes? Well, we have a city website. That's smgov.net slash 1450 ocean. Uh -huh. We also Facebook a whole lot. So there's lots of pictures from our classes and pictures of upcoming classes. Facebook.com slash 1450 ocean. We have a meetup page. Um, we're on online calendars all mm -hmm. over the place. And of course, you can stop by, and we always encourage people to come because the camera obscura is so fun. I to know, visit. it's such a neat thing. <laughs> Where do we park if we come? Parking, there's a new structure that just opened up on uh, 2nd Street. That's oh. uh, structure number six. So that's the very second, close. Second and what? Like second between Broadway and Santa Monica. So it's right basically one block over from us. Um, that's a dollar for two and a half hours. Can't oh, beat it. It's can't really great. And then you get to come home with a fascinator. <laughs> yes, or, yes. Or this beautiful, be how long would a, a class to make well, weed, we would probably weaving? Start with uh, how to set it up and then you probably have some homework. Oh, so, so you c there's something you can take home Yeah, with you? probably. This kind of thing, you'd have to do a little bit more work. And on. you'd have to bring your seeing eye dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you so These, much. These, though, what? actually, is just a one session, and it's oh. instant gratification. Yeah. Put it in the kiln for three minutes, out it comes. Oh, I love it. And it's done. <laughs> oh, that's a great gift idea yeah. for ourselves, <laughs> right? Thank you so much, Naomi. This is really exciting. I am loving this. So. For more information, I'm going to run that website past you, smgov.net slash 1450ocean. Thank you so much for joining us for Spotlight Santa Monica. Join us next time for more of the people and departments that make Santa Monica such an amazing place to live.